Hi, Kevin here again. Uh, been off for a little while, and, but I wanted to get back and answer probably the most common question and comments on the uh, videos I've been doing with the Alesis Nitro Mesh, and that is how to set it up to play with X. Uh, today we're going to look at Main Stage. Uh, Main Stage is honestly probably the best value you can buy from Apple. Um, it is $29 and it provides all the amp effects, keyboard sounds, drum sounds, synthesizer, sampler, everything that's included in Logic Pro, but it's designed for live performance. It is a remarkable value. Again, really $29. So if you have a Mac available to you, a Mac Mini, iMac, Mac Pro, uh, MacBook Air, whatever it is, um, I can't recommend it highly enough. It is just a fantastic fantastic value and the sound quality is amazing whether you're a keyboardist or your guitarist or bassist um, the effects channels all those sort of things but today we're going to focus on uh, using the kits that are built into main stage and uh, see how we can use it with our Lisus nitro mesh um, the one downside or the one limitation with any of the kits in main stage is they're designed only for a five-piece kit so while my kit, you know, is more expanded, you can only use three toms. There's not an option to add a fourth tom or anything else. But using the tools I'm going to show you with the um, brain on the Alesis, you can use your other pads to trigger other sounds that you might need. So it does give you some flexibility if you've expanded your kit like I have. If you have the base kit, it's fantastic because five pieces right in, and it'll work. What's also great is a slightly limited version of this is also included in GarageBand, which is free on your Mac. It's even free on your iPad. And believe it or not, you can hook your Alesis Nitro Mesh up to your iPad with the right adapter for USB and play the sounds that are in GarageBand on your iPad. It's kind of trippy, honestly. Um, but again, it's a, a great way to do it if you don't have a Mac and you happen to have an iPad. It doesn't quite work on the phone, as far as I can tell, um, but let me know in the comments if you figured that out, because that would be a great uh, portable solution as well. So we're going to take a look at the brain. We're going to take a look at how we program these things and how we customize the kit to work with this. Okay, a quick reminder again, I have expanded my kit uh, from the base Alesis Nitro Mesh, uh, as you've seen in some of my other videos. Um, again, we're gonna really gonna focus on a five piece kit um, with three symbols, but you, if you do expand your kit like I have, even if you add another symbol pad, you do have options. I'm gonna show you that in a second. So you can see right now, five piece, and again, you can get a different sound there. Hi-hat, bass, all that. I'll show you what to do with these extra pads in a second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this pad out of the way and bring the camera over so you can see the brain. But the thing to remember with MainStage, GarageBand, and some of the other apps like um, Easy Drummer Pro, uh, for example. I'm sorry, Easy Drummer. You can't, in the software, change the MIDI note that's pegged to a, a particular sound. In more advanced ones like uh, BFD or Superior Drummer, you can, in the software, say, hey, I want this sound to be triggered by MIDI note 53. In these other apps like MainStage and Easy Drummer, you don't have that option. You have to change it on the brain to match what is already pre-configured in the app. Uh, and that's what we're going to show you. Um, what's nice with MainStage is there is an Apple support document. I'll put the link in the description. I'll also have it up on the screen in a second. That basically gives you a keyboard layout of all the sounds and what notes they map to. Now, unfortunately, they're mapped to a keyboard using the letter scale and not the MIDI note number. And what I've done is I've taken my version of it 
and I have put in a couple of the uh, numbers so that I have a reference point so I don't have to count as much, which is a little bit of a pain. But once you get used to it, it's pretty quick because once you can find one sound, then you know, oh, I'm counting up eight notes. This is what it should be. But I'll show you that on the screen and I'll show you that later when we do it in the software. So let me move the camera over. I'm going to move this tom pad out of the way and we'll get a look at the brain and exactly how you set each pad to each MIDI number that you need to send over to main stage. All right, so give me one second. We'll do that. Okay, we've slipped that tom out of the way, and now you can get a pretty good look at the brain. Um, you can see my big fat finger getting in there and pushing things around. The Lesis Nitro Mesh Brain, the drum module, comes with some set preset kits that are arranged in kit numbers 1 through 24. And then you have this user space where you can store your own combination of kits from U25 all the way up to U40. This is where you'll store your configuration that maps what pad sends what MIDI note to your software. And what's great is it allows you to set up multiple kits to do different things. So for example, let's say you have a song where you need, uh, I don't know, a cowbell. Well, in one of the kits, you can set up one of your pads to play the cowbell sound, and you would store it in one of the user kits. And maybe the next song, you would need a tambourine. So in that configuration, you could set that same pad to now send a different MIDI note to play the tambourine, and you would then save it under a user kit so that you can now swap back and forth to get the mappings that you need for the songs that you're playing. Um, so. What I'm going to do is, see we're in the kit area now, and what we want to do is we want to select each of the pads and check what MIDI numbers are going on and get this configured. Now I have one that's already done, but for this demonstration we're going to pretend that I don't and I'm just going to pick this user 30 kit, which I don't use. So the way to get to how you set the MIDI numbers is to go to this voice and tap on the drum that you want to do which is fantastic because you don't have to remember what pad it is or anything else. You just have to tap on the drum you want to work on and that's the one that's selected. You want to keep pressing this voice key. You're going to get through some of these parameters that are meant for the built-in brain. And now we're going to get to the magic one, mid for MIDI note. So right now, my snare drum mesh pad is sending MIDI note 38. Now, if you refer back to the support document that Apple provides that shows you what note that is. That's actually D1 on the keyboard if you're using the numbering system or MIDI note 38. That's the snare center sound. If I wanted that to be, let's say, a hand clap, it'd be up one to 39. I move this to 39 and I get hand claps. If I go to the first tom, it's sending MIDI note 45. Now, 45 by default is actually the mid tom. It's not the high tom. The high tom is 45, 46, 47, 48, 48. Go up to mini note 48. And now you get the high tom. I'm going to play the second tom. That's 743. We were just on, what did we say? 45. So there's the mid tom. tom. And now let's go to the floor tom. Now there's the floor tom. So, right? Now three toms are now sending MIDI note 48, MIDI note 45, MIDI note 41. That's fantastic. So now let's take a look at the symbols. So I'm going to hit the ride symbol. Right, I'm sending MIDI note 51. And if we take a look, MIDI note 51 is actually the ride outer. I like to use the ride edge sometimes. So let's take a look at this in a 52. Oh, that's a little bit too washy. How about the ride inner, a little bit tighter, drier? That is 59. 
So 59 to ride inner. Let's go down to 51 and compare it. Oh, I kind of like that one better. So there's our ride symbol at 51. Now I'm going to go up to the right hand crash symbol. That's setting MIDI note 49. And 49 is the crash left. Well, that's the crash right. It's the same note. I'm hitting the crash, my left crash symbol right now, and I'm writing my right crash symbol now. It's the same note. That's not going to work for us. So we're going to take the right one, and we're going to move that all the way up to 57, because if you look at the mapping document, ah, there we go. There are our two ride sim uh, crash symbols. So we're going to ride, right crash, left crash. Now when you move over to the hi-hat, you can see when I step down, that's 44, fully open, 46, and then that mysterious middle space that on this Alisa's kit is really hard to find is that 23. That's not going to work for us. Not that we get that there that often, but it is good to have that mapped if we can find that. So. Let's go with the hi-hat open at 46 on this as well. Tap our way up to 46. Close, open, close, open, right? That's nice. Um, you can do some other things. There's a hi-hat hi -hat foot sl splash. But we're gonna stick with the, the basics. Close and open. Um, that's good enough for this. If you were lucky enough to have a continuous variable um, hi-hat pedal, which this Alesis doesn't support, you could get that full range of open to close, but you know the limitation on this particular pedal. You really have three areas, fully closed, fully open, and that very hard to hit middle range there. Um, but that works for that. The snare, and then, oh, the rim of the snare, what do we have mapped right now? Oh, a cross shot. That's pretty good. Um, cross shot is 37, um, which is easy to do. But if you wanted that to be something like a rim shot, which would be 40, we could go up. Which is nice. Um, we're going to stay with that. We're going to move to there. Um, I have one extra pad, because uh, since I pushed that other one out of the way, let's see what that's mapped to. Oh, it's mapped to the hand clap. That's interesting, but you know what? Every song needs, that's right, more cowbow. So let's move ourselves up. That's uh, eight, seven, six, I think it's 56. There we go. So perfect. So now that we have all those pieces mapped, we have the kit just the way we want. Rides, crash, toms, a set right for main stage. We're gonna go back to kit. We're on user 30, we're gonna hit save. It's gonna ask us basically by blinking, do you really mean to do this? And I hit save, and now kit 30 has that mapping. So now I can switch out and switch back in. All right, so that's really it when it comes to the brain. If let's say we wanted to put on the rim shot, we wanted, um, Instead, uh, the hand claps, for example. Let's go to the MIDI note. That's the rim. So hand claps, if we go back to our handy dandy chart, is 39. Go down to 39. Kit. Now let's go up one and hit save and save again. So now on kit 31, my rim. Whoops, I made a mistake there. Didn't I? Let's try that again. Voice. MIDI. Oh, 40. There we go. Save. Kit 31. There we go. 31. See, it's easy to make a mistake. It's easy to go up and down a little bit too quickly. It's good to check it. So now my rim is 31. And now my rim is the rim shot. Is the, uh, rim shot. So that's how you can set up your kit to do different things depending on the song you want to do. 
So that's how to program the Alesis Nitro Mesh Brain uh, to work with Main Stage and some of those other ones. We're going to end the video here. And in the next video, what I'll do is I'll give a brief demonstration of how you can set up your drums kits, change your sounds, do all the things you can do in Main Stage at a basic level um, to really enhance what you're doing with a Main Stage and your Alesis Nitro Mesh. Until then, I'll see you soon. Bye.